Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. What I have here for you today is the Brother 1601. GearBest did send me this knife for review, however it will not influence my review in any way. I'll give you the pros and cons and everything. Which, by the way, you could get it at GearBest. I provided a link in the description box below for the unbelievable low price, and I mean unbelievable, for $19. Now, some of you might have been yelling at the top of your lungs so loud that I could actually hear it through YouTube that this looks like a Manix 2 XL. Uh... Yes, it looks like it. It is very familiar to it, but it is not a clone. It's, uh, and I'll go over some of the differences between this and the Manix 2 XL by Spyderco. But um, as far as its purpose, I think it's great for those who want to try a large EDC that sort of has that Spyderco Manix 2 XL styling without that cost because a Spyderco Manix 2 XL costs over $100 and this only costs $19 so you sort of lose the fear of losing it or damaging it you know so I think it does have a niche market so this review is going to be a little bit backwards I'm going to talk about the differences before I go into all the features and, and details uh, because that sort of what this knife is about and I think uh, it deserves top tier here in the review so let's talk about the differences first of all the logo okay obviously it doesn't have the Spyderco logo on it which is good it just says brother on there and on the other side you can see where it says 440 C and 1601 which brings me to the next difference it's blade steel the Spyderco Manix XL uh, uses CPM S30V, where this uses 440C. Size, the XL is actually uh, a couple of millimeters larger, maybe like one or two millimeters larger overall. I think the blade might be one and the handle might be one. So slightly, this one is slightly smaller. smaller. Jimping. Now, I do have, I don't own an XL, but I do own a Manix 2 standard size. But um, the jimping is in all the same places. And for one thing, you could see that the jimping on this guy, on the 1601, it only has half the 50-50 choil, where here you actually have it all the way on both. Also on the handle area here you could see how the brother has it come all the way up to the first finger choil and on the spider coes it only comes up to about there another difference uh, you do have some jibbing here by the way another difference is you can see this half back spacer on the brother they have this really cheesy <laughs> saying on here one knife one life uh, I, I don't know what that's supposed to mean <laughs> it could be taken in so many different ways um, I'll tell you what put put in the comments below what you think that they're trying to say with that <laughs> with that phrase I really don't get it one knife one life maybe this is the knife of your entire life, or this knife can only take one life. I, I really don't know what that's supposed to mean. It's, it's really strange to me. And the last uh, major difference is the screws. Now, Spyderco uses really nice flathead countersunken screws, torque screws. You can see how those are flush. And they're nice. Of course they're nice. They're Spyderco. Brother, you know, they are sunk in a little bit, but they use round heads on everything, including the pivot screw. And this is one of the, the cons right out the door, right out the box, that I noticed how cheesy these pivot screws really look. Where you have the tiny little teeny Torx round head, you know, big, tiny little Torx. It just looks weird. Spyderco does it so much better. One other difference really quick, you know, I, I, I couldn't get by the phrase. The 
There's no jimping on the top here, or at least on my, my Manix 2 there is. I'm not sure if the XL version has that jimping up there or not. Okay, time to go down the features and specs. Closed length of this knife is 5.1 inches. You have some G10 scales. As far as the comparison between this and the Spyderco, Spyderco's um, texture on the G10 feels a little bit more grippy, where on the Manix 2 it, it feels slightly smoother, if that makes any sense to you. It's hard to describe this. Goes Here, feel it for yourself. <laughs> it, it's obviously. Alright, I digress. The clip is very Spyderco. It doesn't have the Spyderco logo on there. And it is reversible, so it's left, right, tip up. And you can see they give you some extra screws. Um, you could take those out and just save them or, or whatever, but they put them there for you so you can have it left or right. As far as conceal concealment in your pocket, about that much is going to stick out. So if that's a big deal for you, uh, good or bad, there it is for what it is. Very big laggard hole, and it, it sort of has like a metal tube in there, so it passes through really easy. And you could obviously get some very large cord, including 550 cord, through that hole with no problem. The lock. The lock is a caged ball bearing lock. It, almost exactly like Spider Co's. And uh, I'd like to take a close up there. We could actually see the ball. And it, it works just as good. Um, I really do like the lock up the way this feels. The deployment is through the use of a very Spyderco light 14 millimeter hole, which is completely ambidextrous, which is uh, another thing about this knife. I'm going to skip ahead into the ergos here for a moment. Um, completely ergonomic because you could act activate the um, lock release from either side and you could deploy the knife from either side and of course you could move the clip from either side so it's completely left right uh, so they didn't leave the 15% left handed out thank you brother and uh, the hole is done really good actually they uh, another company that does these spidey holes I happen to be carrying one is this Ganzo knife right here and I noticed with Ganzo the edges are a little bit smoother you know, right there, than the spider codes, which tend to be sharper. And I rather have that sharper hole because it helps you get a good purchase on there and you know you're it just makes it easier to deploy in my opinion. So it it's about as close as you get to a real spider coal hole without actually buying a spider coat. It is very impressive. That's another thing I noticed right out of the box. So open length is 8.9 inches. Again, it's pretty large. This is a large knife. The blade length is 3.78 inches. 3.78 inches. And the blade style is that typical spider coat leaf. Full flat grind. From top to bottom, you can see a lot of fingerprints. Has a brushed satin finish that does not hide fingerprints at all. Um, one thing to note with these full flat grinds, they do make great knives for food prep. However, one of the downsides is you have no flat area on here to clamp a sharpening device if you have one of those. Um, there's a little teeny bit of flat area here, but it's really not going to do you any good. So you're going to have to use a different form of sharpening. You can't use that clamp on. Blade steel, as I said earlier, is the 440C stainless steel. Should be somewhere between 58 and 60 on the HRC, the hardness scale that everybody uses. The weight of this knife is 5.9 ounces. And the knife came in this box right here. And you can see where it says 1601G. Of course, made in China. Comes from Gearmast. Now, I usually do some tests, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's talk about blade centering. Blade centering, as you can see, is just a little off. It's not rubbing the inside steel liners at all, but it is a little bit to your left there. Deployment. 
very, very smooth. Now that I've messed around with it for a week and oiled it a little bit, out of the box it was very gritty and very stiff. Now I didn't adjust the pivot screw, but I did uh, put some oil down in there and it definitely smoothed things out. Now lockup is very solid. There is no up and down, no side to side play at all to speak of. Ergonomics. I love the ergonomics of this knife. I'm going to say it again. I love the ergonomics of this knife because you could hold it down here which gives you a lot of reach. You could choke up on this so if you want to do some fine work and, and get some more control you can choke up on the knife. You can reverse grip for stabbing, for strong stabbing, and the handle is shaped so your thumb just sort of rides down just like that. It feels really good every way I hold this. There's no high spots or hot spots that are digging into my hand at all. And the jimping is crazy good. It's actually better. It's better than Spyderco's jimping, which has some of the best jimping out there. Um, see, with Spyderco, it, it's your normal type of jimping, which, you know, it, it's just normal jimping where it's like triangles all up and different vendors will have different sizes and different sharpness. And what they did here is they actually. Um, made the jimping at an angle where it's sort of pointing toward your finger so when you press into it your, your finger is just digging down into it. It's unbelievable how good the, the jimping is. This is the best jimping on a knife not just under $20, not just under $50, but maybe under $100. It is truly incredible. Alright, so the next thing we'll talk about here is, I'm going to have to sacrifice some of my notes here, and we'll just do some sharpness test. Now, I didn't sharpen this, but I, like I said, I did oil it, but, okay, we're push cutting there. So it comes very sharp. Wow. But this, this is unbelievably sharp, because I'm not even angling it. I'm just literally pushing into the paper. That is crazy sharp. That is crazy sharp. <laughs> Uh, I got a lot of hair, so we can see if I can shave with it. Yes, I can shave with it. I might as well just finish this hair so I don't look like an eight that shaved. <laughs> that is crazy. This is a really an incredible uh, knife. I'm just impressed by the sharpness of this. This is the sharpest out of the box I experienced in maybe a couple of years. Um, really pretty damn good. All right, I get a lot of criticism for this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway because it's my channel. <laughs> and uh, what I'm going to do is, this is just soft pine, but I do this, and this is something you don't want to do. This is knife abuse, but, whoops, damn it. <laughs> just put a hole in my, um, my pad there. All right, so the, what I do is I, I do this to test the heat treatment of the steel to make sure it's not so soft and brittle or actually so brittle that it just breaks the tip. And you can see the tip is fine. Let you see the thickness of the blade right there. So even though it does come, you know, to the tip kind of thin, it held up to, you know, what's considered a little bit of light abuse. So there you go. That's uh, It passes all the tests with flying colors. The only thing that I saw that was a slight issue was blade centering. And it's not an issue. It's just there to bug the anal attentive type of people out there. Okay, we're almost at the end. So what do I do at the end? I basically sum up the pros and cons. We'll start out with the cons. The screws look cheap. They obviously function well because they're holding everything together, but they're, they're kind of cheapish and deep, cheapest looking. If you could replace them with a flathead, that would be freaking awesome. Um, the knife was very stiff out of the box, but 
a little bit of oil. I didn't have to do any adjustment or anything. Maybe if I did some adjusting, maybe the, the blade center would get better. I don't know. The texturing on the G10 is a little bit smooth for my liking. I wish it had the same texture as the Manix 2s. And even those are a little bit light on the uh, purchase that you could get on them. I, I like a very grippy kind of texture. But you know, you might not. You might like this. And the last thing was the, the blade centering. All right, pros, price, $19. You can't beat that one with a baseball bat. That is just insane for what you're getting here. It, it still just boggles my mind that you can get a knife of this quality, which is sort of comparable with the, Gon the Gonzos, the Ganzo knives that I've been reviewing. So if you like the feel, and the quality of a Ganzo. I think you're definitely going to like the brother here. It is uh, pretty damn impressive. Um, other things I really like is the really sharp jimping. Probably the best jimping I've ever felt. Now, if you don't like extremely sharp jimping, that might be a con for you. But for me, it's incredible. You're, it just locks into your fingers. And also, um, w when I do reviews, I typically just go look at other people's reviews of the knife and I have to say that this thing gets four and a half and five stars from everybody so everybody else seems to really like this knife I have not read uh, in my brief looking on the interwebs any negative reviews of this knife now I know there's always that controversy about oh well they just are you know it's a clone well, I'm here to tell you it's not a clone because they don't put the markings. It is different sizes, and they did change quite a few things. So, you know, it's not even a one-for-one -one copy. But, you know, I mean, they did sort of copy, you know, the most of the features and everything. So, I mean, if you... If we just put it this way. If you don't like what they're doing here, don't buy it. But if you're looking for a knife that is... You know, that Spyderco pattern and all the great things about Spyderco, but without the price, so you don't feel like you have to baby it and you can't use it. And um, if you lose it, you're not going to get that lump in your throat that you just lost over $100. This, this is great. And also, if you just want to sort of feel... Now, this obviously is not going to feel as great as a Spyderco as far as operation smoothness. There is um, a, a very nice smoothness about, you know, when you pick up a real Spyderco, how it feels and operates. It, it, you know, it feels like the cost that you're paying for it. And this, although it feels a lot more than a $19 knife, it's not as smooth and crisp as a Spyderco. So you do get what you pay for. But you are not going to find a better knife for the money. And I highly, highly recommend this knife. I gave you the good and the bad. And again, Gearbest did send me this for review, but I gave you the good and the bad. I'm honest with you. Just keep that in mind. I, I know some people feel like they're giving it to me, so they have to assume that I only could do good reviews on it. I only recommend. I, there are a lot of things they have sent me and other vendors have sent me that I just don't do the review if I don't like it. So don't think that I uh, accept and review everything I get. Um, and a lot of things I just buy with my own money. I just don't like doing negative reviews if it's something that I don't like. I just, if you have nothing good to say, don't say anything at all is kind of my... Um, motto <laughs> unless i feel it's something that's a danger or something that i need to put out there sort of as a public service bullet in not to really screw over anybody if you know what i mean just to protect people that's that's when i might go ahead and do a negative like i think there was a knife i think there were there was like one knife that was by gerber it was a really cheap one where um the lock failed i mean you could literally just put it on the counter and push and it would fold up on you I felt strong enough. And then there was another knife where it just broke really easy. I think that was another Gerber. It was a Bear Grylls, which uh, got a lot of hits. <laughs> a lot of controversy. People love their Bear Grylls. And you say anything bad, they get all passionate and, and everything. You would think they were running for president or something. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? So anyway, 
Uh, one knife, one light. Don't know what that's about, but if you want to sort of put in the description box what you think that means, or maybe suggest something they should have put in there instead, because I think that's pretty weak. I don't know. They like, okay, we got to put something on the back of this. Uh, think of something, and they just pulled something out of the hat. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession channel. I really do appreciate every friend, viewer, subscriber, and especially you. And I hope you have a great day or evening. Take care. Bye.